So uh, good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of the content which I wanted to br uh, bring in over here was already discussed in the panel, but I'll be bringing the stats around it. And I also wanted to give you a demo of our platform, but unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to do that because there's some sync issue. But it's fine. Uh, I can give you an overview of that altogether, right? Yeah, so the, uh, getting into the session, uh, we've seen how connected TV is important, how connected TV is growing. We've seen a lot of debate over linear versus connected TV, right? But it's important to see that from a consumer lens now, right? How connected TV as a, uh, as a device is being consumed by the audiences and to what extent and how we are able to create ecosystem around it to target the right uh, connected TV audiences. So the first one which I want to uh, explain is that yeah, India is the second largest market globally in terms of uh, television size. And that's, and I don't think it's a surprise, right? But the sheer amount of the population which we have and the kind of households which we have, uh, the number of households we have, I think we are still only at 70% penetration on TV as a market. Today we are at 217 million household, which has grown a uh, staggering growth of 1.7, 1 1.1% CAGR growth over the last uh, three, four years. Uh, what is the new phenomenon? Obviously, connected TV, and you've seen multiple numbers coming in in the forum today. And one of the quote which I would like to uh, again classify here is the co the numbers which we see over here is largely from the number of campaigns we have run and how we have seen unique devices being populated, right? In that aspect, from 2019 mid onwards, we've been tracking this forum very closely as Group M, and the growth story is that from a seven million base in 2020. It has moved to a 33 million base by the end of 2023. It is expected to cross 20 or 45 million base by the end of this year, maybe sooner, as you have seen in the previous panel, like the ambitious approach from uh, Hotstar and other OTT platforms to kind of ensure that there is more growth happening in the connected TV space. Now, what are the, dri what are the factors driving this growth? Uh, we also heard that, yes, one is one of the most important aspects is broadband penetration. Yeah, until 2019, it has been a very, very sluggish growth for broadband. But from 2020 onwards, we are seeing a staggering growth in broadband that today, uh, in the last three years, if you see, there's been a 72% penetration of broadband pen in, uh, in broadband households in India. Right, from a 22 million household, it has almost crossed 38 million. Uh, by the end of this year, it's expected to cross almost 45, 50 million base. But I'll come to that, one more aspect of this, the consumption of connected TV does not uh, restrict only onto broadband, there is more to it. The other part is the way the ecosystem is uh, shaping up, right? So today, nine out of 10 times when you go and buy a television outside in the market, it's, uh, it's eventually a smart TV. And that's primarily because of the entire OEM ecosystem has been pushing smart TVs in the distribution, uh, in the distribution angle. And today we can see not just the uh, MNCs, which is your Samsungs and Xiaomi's of the world, but it's also that a 50, 55 percent of the uh, the, uh, the share is also owned by a lot of non-organized uh, uh, local players, which has almost 50, 55 percent share, and that's been growing year on year, right? If you see today, it's at a 91 percent. Uh, as on this is again an update as on H1 2023, but I'm sure this would have crossed. 95% are probably very soon going to touch 100% by the end of this year. Now, coming back to my part when I mentioned about, yeah, it's not just broadband uh, which is getting used for streaming content on TV. And I think uh, we heard today morning that one of our uh, uh, co-audience was mentioning about that. They also cast it, right, from mobile. And what is helping that is because of this particular uh, uh, breakthrough in India, which is the data. Internet is one of the most uh, affordable these days. India is the second affordable market in Asia in terms of mobile data. And just a representation of that, if you can see in the top table, that most of the, uh, the top telecom providers, and also parallelly, you can also see the fixed broadband uh, uh, distribution. The level of data penetration in terms of affordability and in terms of uh, 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 access through multiple touch points has been growing, right? So we have enough and more examples and we have enough more in, uh, uh, data signals coming in from our research, which we have recently concluded, stating that people just don't use broadband penetration alone 
to kind of consume content. They also use mobile data to uh, hotspot, use hotspot to kind of stream ag content over uh, television. Now, if you go to the table below, right, and that is the right comparison to see where bro how broadcasters are also moving to the space. Today, if you see, broadcasters have also understood this point, and that's where I firmly believe that CTV today is not just only an urban syndrome, it has moved beyond urban and top eight metros, and I'll prove and I'll tell you how it's happening. Today, broadcasters have also kind of attributed to this. They have various levels of consumption mode. Right, when you, as a consumer, when you switch on to your television, uh, either you, as default, it comes as an auto mode, but you have three different modes where you can use uh, to stream content basis your uh, data pack and the speed of it, right? So uh, it's not just that uh, you need high speed internet only through broadband to kind of consume content on TV, but you can also have uh, a slightly lesser uh, speed of data and still consume content on television. And just to give you a trivia, a recent trivia which has happened, uh, which has been published by ACT Broadband is on the uh, IPL consumption. That almost uh, 4 GB of data is consumed in a three hours of match, right? So, and you all know that today there are unlimited data packs available and there are uh, a minimum guaranteed 4G speed of 10 Mbps and 40 Mbps already available. So, what makes you think that the consumption cannot happen on television through your mobile data as well? Right, so that's become, uh, we don't have too many signals coming in, but there is enough proof from our very close uh, uh, survey which has been done saying that yes, consumption is happening at multiple, uh, not just broadband as well as uh, data. So yeah, coming to our uh, a few key takeaways from a recently concluded report, uh, Group M has commissioned this the second time, which is the changing landscape of Indian television. We have recently concluded and published this two months back. Uh, we, this was a survey done across India, across 4,000 odd panelists. We have, uh, 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 what do you call, we have uh, 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 partnered with a company called Ampere Analysis and we have uh, onboarded 400, 4,000 odd panelists across the country and we have done an uh, in-depth survey. So the next few slides is going to take you a deeper understanding about how the audience and how India is shaping up in terms of connected TV viewership. Yeah, so this is, as I said again, this is across almost 350, 400 odd campaigns which we have delivered as Group M uh, in the last one year between 2022 and 2023, which clearly indicates that the kind of impressions getting generated from each of these markets have grown. So <clears throat> yes, I agree, uh, four, three years back if you ask me, 85-90% uh, of the CTV audiences were top eight metros, but that's not the phenomena, or phenomena anymore. Today we are seeing deep penetration from markets like Haryana, Maharashtra, UP, Jharkhand, all showing extensive growth in the impressions being served. Now, that's the, I think that's the, that's the right currency to look at, right? Because if there is impression being served, which means that there is consumption of connected TV content happening over there. And this is pure connected TV content across all the OTTs uh, and OEMs put together. There is no YouTube and no live cricket uh, data involved in this. So this is purely, purely f happening, this growth is happening from the OTT and OEM space. Now OEM when I say, these are your smart TVs, which uh, I think in the previous discussions also was mentioned that how fast channels are emerging, right? So you can stream your linear TV channels on your smart TV, which is, comes as inbuilt uh, channels on your television and you just latch onto your internet and you can start streaming live content over there. So it is interesting to see how the penetration of CTV is not just in India, it's also Bharat right now, right? And hopefully, we'll be able to extend this beyond these 10 markets also because the way we are seeing certain markets like uh, even tier three, tier three markets like Kanyakumari, Surat, uh, Coimbatore, Madurai, a lot of these markets are showing a prominence of CTV viewership and impressions being served over there. So, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, we, we, as, we, we as Group M were sitting on a data of approximately 400 odd campaigns delivered in the past one and a half years. And through that, we can clearly see that the trend is only progressing, right? From uh, 2022, uh, fag end of 2022 onwards, you can see every quarter you are seeing a growth of impressions being served. And impressions, when I say, it's not just coming only from pure 
connected TV, uh, OEM and OTM space. These are unique devices which are also being able to capture. And that way we are able to identify the growth of unique households which is getting added on a yearly basis. And there's a lot of filtrations also which we do, obviously, because of there will be deduplication because there will be one device uh, which will be duplicated across multiple uh, uh, impressions. Hence, we are able to filter that. So the growth is not purely only on the number of devices comes in. There's a lot of filtration. There is a lot of reanalysis, reconciliations which happens at the back end to identify that what is the unique one which is being delivered, right? So today, in the last 2022, 2023 onwards, there's a 50% growth in the unique devices which we are able to crack. <coughs> now, that's, that was previously from a large aspect of how CTV viewership is across the country. But when you see from how each, how is, it, how is the audience different in a household which has access to an addressable TV? Now, when I'm saying addressable TV is primarily here is connected TV, it's because you are able to address a certain set of audience, right? Uh, so hence, we term it as addressable TV, but in India, it's largely a phenomenon driven by connected TV, but in other markets, linear also has started picking up into the addressable TV space. We are very soon gonna see that happening in India as well. So the addressable TV household to a normal non-addressable TV household, what were the significant shift in terms of consumer behavior and consumer uh, preferences? That's what we want to understand. And through the survey, we came to know that uh, the, the household income, and obviously I think it's a no-brainer, right? Uh, everybody uh, confronted and agreed into a consensus over here saying that, yeah, connected TV audiences are premium and affluent audiences. And that's right. Uh, the, the difference was approximately 1.09x. That is the addressable TV household versus non-addressable TV household, the growth in terms of household income. Uh, obviously, they are internet savvy, tech savvy consumers, and hence they will be more and more shopping online. They will be shopping for uh, their leisure, they will be shopping for uh, grocery, they will be shopping for their day-to-day, -day. and hence the likelihood of them doing more on shopping online was very, very high. And as I said, fast is a new syndrome which is picking up, right? So today, uh, you're not just consuming content or binge-watching content on CTV, you're also watching linear b -word content from C uh, linear environment on your connected platform. So hence, your fast and hybrid ad supporting fun model which has been working on, which I think it's been of a lot of interest in addressable TV households. Now, what are their preferences uh, in terms of when they've been served an ad, right? So uh, addressable TV, as I mentioned, or connected TV, gives you the ability to drive digital capabilities onto your TV. And hence, you're able to target a specific set of audience. I think in this previous panel also, they mentioned about how do I target Bangalore as a market? How do I target a specific geography as a market and serve a particular ad, right? And hence it's becoming more and more relevant ads you're gonna to serve to the consumer. Hence it's becoming 69% of our online respondents uh, conferred that they found the advertising more appealing. 68% of them found it more relevant and 59% found it more memorable, right? Means that's because there's a top of the mind recall of the every ad being served on a connected TV ecosystem. Now, another part is to see that, yes, there is a mix of AWARD and SWARD uh, uh, viewership which happens through uh, connected TV. Now, how do I make it more, uh, uh, more relevant to you? 41% of the respondents were willing to let go of their premium subscription and to accommodate a certain level of ad to see uh, so that they can reduce their subscription fee and they were ready to kind of tolerate certain ads in their uh, overall viewership. And the reason is because it's now less cluttered. Cl connected TV is less, clus uh, let, uh, less cluttered. You don't see more than three or four ads uh, in a break, right? So it's less cluttered and hence there's a tolerance from consumer to kind of consume more. And hence 41% were of the respondents were ready to let go of their uh, subscription fee to kind of adopt more uh, AWARD content. 61% uh, wanted to watch their TV channels on their uh, uh, OTT service. What I mean by this is that uh, a lot of these uh, smart setup boxes and distributors today are actually packing uh, linear and, uh, and fast channels into their uh, uh, offering. Like Geo is one, Geo Ads is one uh, who does that, uh, Airtel Extreme does that, Tata Play does that. So all of these smart setup boxes are also offering the same linear content on your uh, uh, smart television. And hence, it's about convenience, right? It's about a user experience as well. So 61% of the users 
are consuming the same linear content on their OTT uh, uh, platforms. Now, some of the key factors influencing connected TV viewing, uh, I think we already mentioned about the smart TV viewership, right? But it's important to see how, uh, what level the audience, the respondents of our survey uh, uh, acknowledged that. So in the last one and a half or last four years, you say, you, have, you can see two slabs over there, right? one to three years and within last one year. Almost 60% of the audiences confer that they have been rapidly moving into a smart TV adoption. They've been consuming or they've bought smart TV and then consuming content on smart TV. But there's a, there's a disclaimer or there's a catch here. Not every smart TV is connected, right? Um, there are smart TVs who are consumed only from a linear portion and that's what the respondents have surveyed that not everyone has connected them to an internet and streaming content. Only 55% of the respondents of the overall uh, uh, smart TV owners are using them to stream content and hence it's becoming a part of the connected TV ecosystem. What I mean by that, the connected TV or the smart TV sales is much more than the number of connected TVs there in the market. That means there is still a lot of room for connected TV ecosystem to grow. So there are two points which I mentioned. One was how India is, is the only market globally which is growing in terms of both linear and connected TV ecosystem and how the TV viewer households are improving and it's only at 70% penetration now and the second one is here so hence the room for develop or uh, uh, increasing this connected tv space in india is much 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 more we also heard an interesting aspect of co-viewing i think i want to bring a lot of focus onto this because uh, the way we also see consumers uh, watching content is very 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 mirrored to how a linear tv content is being consumed and this is something which we have to, and we have been educating the industry as well as our advertisers that today, uh, connected TV is not a medium which will reach out to an individual audience. It is always reaching out to a, a, a one to, it's a one to many, right? You're reaching out to a household and there will be definitely co-viewership which will happen. So two third of our respondents conferred that yes, uh, they do have other uh, members in the family or friends and uh, uh, their uh, acquaintances watching uh, along with them, right? So it's, it's very, very comparable with your linear TV. And when you come to the chart above, it actually shows you the preference of content. And that's primarily to do with what broadcasters are uh, releasing the content on all these streaming platforms, right? So it actually shows you that the preferences and the kind of viewership which it garners over the, <coughs> in the connected TV space. So obviously sports uh, matters the most. Right, sports is the largest genre being consumed, followed by uh, action and adventure, news, drama, and uh, kids' content. And now these these data, as I said, is outside of YouTube and live uh, uh, live cricket, and hence kids is not a big genre yet in the streaming device. But in YouTube, if you go there, it's actually flips. Kids is a very very large con uh, genre over there. Yes, we did hear about cord cutting. Right? Who are cord cutters? Cord cutters are people who have moved away from the cable and satellite environment, who have moved into a, uh, or moved out of the entire cable environment ecosystem. Now, 11% of our respondents were cord cutters, and they were no longer using any of the pay TV services. But are all 11% a cord cutter moving into connected TV? The answer is maybe, may not be, because only 54% of them said that they are consuming addressable TV content, which means not every cord cutters are uh, connected TV uh, users, but yeah, they could be uh, using a hybrid model or they would be completely shifted away from TV viewership itself. And those are ones which we call as cord neverers, right? People who are completely into a new ecosystem of not watching any content via uh, uh, cord, uh, sorry, uh, cable and satellite. Now, as we've seen, the, the, the entire uh, profile of consumer, uh, now it's important that how we understand it from a targeting perspective. And this is where I want to show you the demo of the platform, unfortunately I'm not unable to, but I would like to give you two disclaimers over here that uh, as an industry, we still don't have a panel or a, a common panel to kind of uh, uh, rate or monitor both connected TV and linear ecosystem system or even connected TV alone. So in absence of such a uh, panel data, we are actually falling back to uh, third party providers who can give you a lot of geospatial available data and that, that I think it also makes merit because we are all moving into a cookie-less 
uh, era very, very, very near, right? Uh, I know that has been deferred by another one more year, which buys us more time. But definitely that is how it is going to be. In that space, we need to kind of create geospatial analysis, understand that from a very granular level, what level of household exists in certain markets, consolidate and create a targeting cohort, right? So we have a group M planning advanced tool, which actually uh, gives you a, a data of a set of cohort of audience up to one square kilometer grid. We heard in the previous panel people talking about there's, there, there is pin code level targeting is something which they would like to activate and something. We have progressed one step ahead. We have further broken down those pin codes to one square kilometer area grids, catchment areas, geopolygons as we speak. And you can specifically target those households available in that particular uh, uh, geo square grid. Now, isn't that advancement of TV itself, right? So if TV has progressed so much, I'm, I'm sure that there's more coming in space of connected TV, and that's what I would like to show you in the next slide, <coughs> where there are multiple ways now you can use to target consumer, connected TV consumer through, uh, 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 what do you call it? custom bespoke creatives. Now, it did you not know, necessarily be the same creative of what you consume on, uh, or what an advertiser would plan on a linear versus on a Facebook to be run on connected TV itself. There's so much innovations now which we are possible on connected TV. So in Group M, we have created an advanced TV creative lab through which we are able to target your consumers through multiple creatives, and these are all highly engaging and interactive creatives, right? So today you can create uh, a specific b text overlay, or you can create a complete barcode out of here, or you can even, there are two aspects to look at. One is that, I can target a consumer basis, the consumer's uh, interest level or cohort they fall in, or if I need to do a tactical campaign, if I need to activate a certain catchment area, push them to a certain store, or push them to a certain catchment area to kind of drive my footfalls, that's also possible. So it's become very contextual now, right? So, And one such uh, advancement which is happening is in the space of QR code. Now. If you recollect three, four years back, we used to call them as promo codes, which used to run in your linear TV as well. And it's still possible you can run these on your linear TV as well. But what is the significant difference which it brings in is that today you can deploy a QR code uh, on your connected TV ad and track that particular household or that particular consumer who has moved to a specific uh, landing page. So how does it activate is that there is a pixel which gets activated on your connected TV, as well as there is a pixel which gets activated on your client's or the brand's uh, landing page. And then you are able to track a full funnel approach that whether this particular person who has seen your ad is the same one who has actually moved uh, 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 intent of uh, purchase or a move to cart or an ad to cart or any call to action which has happened on your landing page. Right? So that's a full-fledged uh, full analysis which is possible. As I said, this is also possible on linear, but the only thing is that it gives you, a, on connected TV, the advantage is that it gives you a real-time analysis, right? a dashboard which tells you that, okay, this has immediately happened, and that's the way you're able to dynamically change your <coughs> creative or dynamically change your entire media, uh, uh, strategy itself. Right? So it's a very real-time uh, access which you get here. Now, Previously, we would have heard that in this is largely pertaining to traditional media that uh, spray and pray, right? That the, the usual term which is used is that you spray and pray and then uh, you reach out to masses. I say CTV is something which actually helps you to aim and spray because it helps, actually helps you to target a specific set of audiences. In fact, as we say, it's actually evolving and you are able to reach out to a more specified audience. And hence, you are able to do a very, very confined and very uh, contextual targeting to your brands or uh, sorry, uh, your consumers. So just two examples or two uh, 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 case studies from Group M on how we have used consumers or how we have used uh, CTV in consumer, reaching out to the right consumer is that Dell, one of our premium client, wanted to target SMB, SME audiences, and they wanted to target only a specific set of market as well, right? So there are two levels of uh, targeting already in place. One is the uh, areas where there is high involvement of SMB, SMB businesses, and also to reach out to that kind of an audiences. And obviously, we were able to do that through our targeting cohort, which unfortunately I couldn't show in, show in my platform. Uh, the other one is again from a brand which wanted to target premium audiences, but with a very different narrative. Now, Tootsie as a brand was, or when you say tooth fixing or teeth fixing, it's primarily, it's a prescriptive one, right? But they wanted to shift this into a beauty page in one, that everybody who 
has a, a dental issue, if you fix it, you will look more attractive, right? So they want to target that kind of a communication to a specific set of audiences. Coming to my last slide, uh, I know I'm slightly running out of time. Uh, just the two couple of trends which I anticipate that which will move in, in the next couple of years on CTV and which I also expect that or uh, I also actually wanted to see the industry moving towards is that yes, obviously we have the challenge of uh, uh, the cookie, cookie dec uh, deprecation which is going to happen and everywhere we, knew, uh, we uh, now need the consumer consent as well, right? Even when you log into a smart TV, you need to have a consumer content, uh, consent, sorry. So how do you navigate that? When you, when you have a cookie-less environment, how do you navigate that? And that's the answer when you have, uh, we have, when we activate from a geospatial or a household level uh, 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 activation. And hence we feel that there will be an emergence of household IDs rather than individual IDs, it will be at a household level. So it will give you household characteristics, it will give you the kind of households you can reach out to, uh, the preferences which that household, what the shopping experience or the shopping preferences which that household will own, everything will be activated to a household ID. And one important thing which I would like to uh, comfort all marketers is that how Gen Alpha, which are people who were born after 2010, are actually moving or how do you target them in future? A very interesting conversation with our, one of our largest FNCG clients uh, gave a very, eye, uh, very insightful thought that today the Gen Alphas who are very internet savvy, how do you interact with them and build a loyal base for the next 10 years? You need to start interacting with them now. And these are those audiences who are largely on voice and uh, voice and interactivity is their major form of reaching out to, right? So how do we as an ecosystem create voice and interactivity into connected TV and create an environment to build a loyal base of Gen Alpha in the next couple of years. That's something to look out for. Um, another uh, aspect is to see how we can build in retail and e-commerce uh, data into uh, uh, the entire CTV delivery. There is humongous level of retail and e-commerce uh, data available. Today there are point of sale data which is a possible uh, where you can track it from a retail outlet saying that this particular consumer has con bought in so-and-so data that's available with all the modern trade outlets. <coughs> How do you incorporate that kind of data, activate a catchment area? How do you bring in e-commerce data from multiple DSP sources is something which we are working on. Shoppable ads is nothing but the one which I showed you previously, the QR code, and how do you start creating tactical campaigns which can either be an offer-led or either be an action-led uh, uh, aspect of it. Right. So these are the future, few future trends which we believe, at least we started working towards, and we believe that in the next couple of months or years, we'll unlock more power to CTV. With that, I end my session. Thank you so much. <laughs>